What's up guys, Sean the Bro here, and today we're going to be going over hit stop. So hit stop is basically the idea of when you attack an opponent or when a, when a hit lands, whether it be actually attacking the opponent or attacking against a block. And then the time, basically the actors will stop, but everything in the background does not have to. And so what we can do to handle this is basically set the time dilation on the actors themselves to be frozen for just a fraction of time. Now, today we're going to be doing it off of time. We're currently working on the input, the buffered input series, uh, and basically that will convert a lot of our things from seconds to frames. So when that happens, this will be a number of frames that you can choose, but for now it's just going to be, you know, basically fractions of a second. You can modify the hit stop multiplier and change it, but I also have it working off of how much damage you do in case that was something you guys were interested in. Now, when doing that, you may want to be careful. I specifically use this projectile just to mention it. I do not actually change anything with the projectile, but I still trigger the hit stop. Now, that's all up to you. Everything you do is going to be, you know, you're going to have to determine how you want it to work. I actually liked the, the way that this worked, where the projectile continued while the actors were stopped. I thought it was cool. Um, and some games do it differently. There are some games where hit stop is determined strictly off of a certain value. There are times when hit stop is based off the damage. There's times where hit stop is based off the type of attack. So you have all sorts of options here to determine how you want to handle it. Anyway. You can get started with that, but this is pretty much all you're going to need for hit stop. For things like longer stuns and, and stops, you know, stopping the whole world for a super attack or something, that's something entirely different that we will also be handling. Alright, so most of this, if not all of it, is going to be in code today. You can do some of it in the blueprint if you'd like, but really there's just no reason to. Hit stop only happens when damage occurs whether it's a, a blocked hit or a a standard hit makes little difference there's still going to be hit stop between both the block the blocked attack is going to do less hit stop perform less hit stop because less damage was dealt and again we're directly tying the amount of damage to a high if a higher amount of damage relates to a higher amount of hit stop all right so in our fighter template character dot h, go up to the top. I've added a few new things today. So I've added a function for both beginning and ending hit stop. Just like we did begin stun and end stun, it's good to kind of set something, you know, set a timer to determine how long we want it to run for and then end it. So that's what we're doing here. So make two functions. The begin hit stop can take in the damage amount if you'd like to make the hit stop reliant on the damage. You could also skip this step and we can just pass in a default amount of time if you'd prefer. All right, and then I've added a few variables. I've added a timer handle, hit stop timer handle. We do have other timer handles. You could technically use them, but I don't like doing that. I like to keep my timer handle separate. That way, there's just no room for error. Then, I have a float called hit stop modifier. You could also call it hit stop multiplier or hit stop value. Basically, this is the value that I'm going to multiply my attack damage from or with. That way, we can determine how long the hit stop is based off the attack, based off the damage that was dealt to the player. That's what this is doing for me. If you want a generic value or a static value that's just, it's always one second for hit stop, then just set this to the value you want. You don't have to use it as a modifier. You can just say one equals 1.0 1 for one second. And that's all we have in terms of the header file, but there's plenty for us to do in the CPP file. First of all, let's set all our default values. You don't have to set the timer handle, nothing to do with that. But we do have to set the hit stop modifier. Now I've set it to be 1.0 because basically if you think about it, if I do an attack that does 0.2 damage, um, so one fifth of the enemy's health bar, it's going to freeze for 0.2 seconds. Now it should probably be shorter than that. It really does depend on what you want. 
but I figured while I don't know what the values are that I want, I should probably go ahead and just set this to some standardized value like 1.0. That way I can, I can always know if I'm doing more damage, then it's going to be a longer hit stop, but only as much as the damage is worth. You could make this 5.0 and make it really long. You can make it 0.5 and make it shorter. Okay. Now go down to where you want to make your functions. We'll make the begin hit stop and end hit stop functions before we make before we call it from the take damage function. So go ahead and make these two functions right here. So begin hit stop takes in the damage amount. And there's, there's one main thing we need to care about. We need to care about what is going to be deter what is going to be affected by the hit stop. So the hit stop we determined was going to be for the actors, for the both the character doing the attack and the character that is getting attacked. Now you can separate some logic down the line. A lot of fighting games will have the character actually shake while they're in the hit stop effect. You know what? If they were the character that was hit, and we can do that, but we're not going to be doing that here but we can still do it using this method down the line. So we can change something called custom time dilation on our character. And if you set it to 0, 0.0, it will completely stop it and they will no longer be moving. They have no, no time is passing as far as that character is concerned. Nothing in tick, nothing like that. So custom time dilation equals zero. And regardless of who landed the hit and who's taking the hit, then we want to call other player custom time dilation equals zero because we're stopping both characters. Then we want to set a new variable, or you could just pass in uh, this to here, to your timer. But I wanted to make a new variable so it was clear. So we have the damage amount that we passed in to begin hit stop, and we have the hit stop modifier that we made that I made 1.0. I multiply them together to get the result, float hit stop time. Then, usually the timer is stopped when hit stop occurs, but it isn't always, so that is also up to you. Depends on how you want your game to play. If you do want your timer to stop, then we're gonna need stuff from our game mode. And if you have not been watching the series, but you are interested in the hit stop and making your own fighting game, I'll leave a link right here to the, the episode where we made the timer. That way, if you want to make your own timer and fill in this logic like I have here, you can. Otherwise, I will link the very first episode in the entire playlist of this series for anyone who is interested. Okay. So, what I'm doing here is getting the game mode. And this gets the game mode that's from the server. The server is the only one that should have the game mode. So I'm getting world, get the game mode, and then I'm casting it to the game mode type that we want and the game mode type that we are most likely using. So we're going to be using the fighter template game mode.cpp in this case, which of course is fighter template game mode. So I'm casting to this type and then I'm setting it equal to this variable. And I'm doing this around an if statement because if this cast fails or if this game mode doesn't exist, whatever, happens where this does not work. If this game mode does not get assigned and it's null pointer, this would cause a crash, or at the very least an error, and we can just avoid that by putting it in an if statement like this. But if it is valid, then we set is timer active to be false. In the game mode blueprint, and I'll show you this just as a refresher because it's been a while, we check against this. So in event taken the game mode, you can see we check is timer active before reducing the round time. So by setting is timer active to be false in here, we are stopping the timer from counting down on tick. And then we're done with the game mode. The last thing we have to do is set the timer to end the hit stop. If the time dilation is 0.0, .0 we're not going to reach any sort of condition on those characters that's going to stop it. We're going to have to manually stop it. But we can set a timer that goes and stops it itself and calls the end hit stop function. So this is how a timer is set up. I had done a few others in the series, so you might be familiar with this by now. It is a little bit weird, but you get world, get timer manager, dot set timer. That's the function call, okay? This is what you need to call the function. And what you have to pass in a handle, which controls, you can start and stop the timer and reset it, things like that. 
So we pass in our hit stop timer handle, pass in a reference to this. You call the function, or you basically pass in a reference to the function that you want to call when the timer is complete, when it's reached the time that you give it. So I want to call fighter template character and hit stop, this function right here. I pass in my hit stop time, which is my float value that I made here. And then false. Now, hit stop time, say I do 0.1 damage. Well, then hit stop time ends up being 0.1. So after 0.1 seconds have passed, end hit stop is going to be called. Once it is called, we want to reset everything. So I go ahead and I set custom time dilation back to 1.0. Other player custom time dilation back to 1.0. So both characters are back to their normal selves and they will continue whatever they were doing. Animations, um, you know, any other movement that comes with their, their character and their mesh. Then we want to start the timer back up. I do the exact same if statement as before. And then just say is timer active to be true. You can keep a game mode reference if that's better for you. A lot of times, like this game mode reference will fall out of scope after this function is done. So there's actually some beauty to that because then the class itself isn't holding all this game mode data. They're holding a reference to that data and you clear up some of the data. So there's begin and end hit stop. We still need to actually call begin hit stop so that we can trigger this chain of events. Now the best place to do this, if we're, especially if we're doing it off of damage, is the take damage function. Now you don't have to pass anything else unless you want to actually pass a hit stop value in to take damage for specific attacks. If you wanted, you know, oh this certain attack want, should have more hit stop than other attacks. You could pass in an optional parameter that has a hit stop amount, and then if that amount is greater than zero, use that instead of the damage, uh, the damage amount for the begin hit stop function. So up to you. But where we're gonna call this, I call it after the stuns because especially when we get into changing this to frames instead of seconds, uh, we do want the character to go into the hit reaction first before we trigger the hit stop. Now my animations right now are very long. My, my hit reaction is probably about 100 frames or so. It is not a short like frame or two frame animation like it probably should be. So it doesn't, you won't really be able to see it now. However, if we do it in this order and when we convert things to frames, it will become a lot more obvious. So after the last episode, uh, we have high, mid, and low attacks or high, low, and overhead attacks. Because of that, uh, we were calling stun at the end of all of these. After the stun, I do it completely out of the bracket here because you don't have to be stunned for hit stop to trigger. If for whatever reason you're doing some sort of combo, and you don't have any stun time on it, then you may still want hit stop. If for whatever reason you don't want that, that's perfectly fine. Again, configure this to your liking. For me, I waited till after I called begin stun, and after this whole block was done, and I called begin hit stop with the damage amount. Now the damage amount that I passed in is the damage amount from my take damage function. So whatever gets passed in to take damage is what's getting used here. This is on an unsuccessful block. So basically just taking a full hit. Now for my block, I do damage amount times 0 0.5, which should probably even be less than that and maybe depend on a few other things. But for now, we have a float reduced damage that is changing our block, or the damage that the character takes based on if they were blocking. So if they're blocking, they take half the damage that they normally would. Because of this, I wanna use the reduced damage for my begin hit stop time. So instead of passing in the damage amount, I wait until the stun is over because there is still block stun. So even though there's not hit stun in this case, there's block stun. So once all the stun stuff is over, I call begin hit stop with reduced damage. And at that point, we're actually done with hit stop. It's, it's that simple. Again, we're gonna change it to be using frames here shortly. And we're gonna do a big change where, you know, all everything that was based off of seconds before, is going to be off of frames, except for certain things like the round timer. So we'll be we'll be making this work a lot uh, more like a traditional fighting game that you're familiar with. But you can already see how the hit stop is actually working. We do the attack. The character gets stunned. 
time stops for a short amount of time for both players, but the world around it does not stop. Thus, the projectile continues its animation while the characters are waiting. And of course, it works for uh, if player two hits player one as well. It will also work if the character is blocking, remember. So it's going to be less than the regular hit stun. Or hit stop, excuse me. But there is still hit stop. And that's how you can make hit stop that's reliant on the damage. Or really any type of hit stop. Now we will, as I said, address other stopping things in the future. Like one specific request is to, when doing a super move or like an ultimate move, we can stop the whole world around us for a second and just have the actor be the one that is that is playing and performing their animation. So we, we will be covering other things regarding time and you know time dilation and stopping other actors from ticking, different things like that. So be on the lookout for those episodes. But otherwise, just get ready. We have one of the most exciting episodes coming down the pipeline, which is the buffered input episode. I can't wait till that's done. I'm working really hard on it to make sure I get everything right. That way, we don't have to make so many changes to it in the future. And that is basically so that you can press inputs as soon as you are ready and the character will pick up on them within a few frames. So you can kind of pre-perform moves, you know, when you're coming out of another move. It doesn't have to be so specific. Oh, once I'm back in idle, it'll make it a little bit cleaner. All right, guys, so that's all I got for you today. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed, please subscribe. It does more for me and the channel than anything else you can do. I want to give a huge shout out to my YouTube membership and Patreon supporters and subscribers. Thank you guys for continuing to give me the support. It helps me really continue the series. I love working on these videos and seeing you guys be as excited about it as I am is, is wonderful. So thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Lastly, guys, if you want to come hang out with me while we do some programming streams, you can come check me out every single Friday, 6 to 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, where we're working on our side scroller tutorial series. And it's just for fun, more freeform, but we get to work on certain things. Uh, you know, basically anything we want. And it's cool because it's it reminds me of a lot of the side scroller games I used to play. Like the Castlevania games are some of my favorite games, so I'm modeling it pretty heavily off of that. Alright guys, that's all I've got for you today. So thank you so much for watching. I'm Sean the Bro, and I'll see you in the next episode. Goodbye guys.